Now, more than half a million coronavirus cases have been confirmed in South Africa, according to the country's health minister. Zwili Nkize announced 10,107 new cases on Saturday, bringing the tally to 503,000. 290 along with 8,153 deaths. South Africa is the hardest hit country on the continent and accounts for half of all reported infections in Africa. It also has the fifth highest number of cases in the world after US, Brazil, Russia and India. Joining us now is Neil Liu, a journalist in South Africa. Pleasure to have you join us on the news. Thank you for having me. Is it fair to say poverty uh, was the rate limiting factor for South Africa, considering that even so-called first world countries struggled against the economic demands of the pandemic? Um, I think the answer to that would be a firm yes and a no. I think it's a double-edged sword for South Africa, if you could just give me a second to explain. Um, the reality is that uh, South Africa um, had a very low number of, of cases in the beginning. But ultimately what led to the spike was because um, people um, from uh, poverty-stricken areas could not afford to not go into work. Um, some of them were essentially uh, essential service workers who had to go in when the country, country did eventually implement um, the, the, the lockdown. But there's also the issue of the rural areas that are, um, are facing you know, turmoil within the health sector, uh, meaning that they could not necessarily accommodate everybody once the spikes reach the heavily dense areas. We've got areas in the Eastern Cape, for example, areas in, in KZN, as well as in the Western Cape, where um, the health system was not necessarily running smoothly. As I speak to you at the moment, the Eastern Cape still does not have efficient beds. Uh, you know, they have a, a frail uh, healthcare system, which means that they're still pretty much under pressure. Um, it was poverty that led to some of the de decisions around reopening the country with the government unable to subsidize all sectors of the economy and having to reopen way more than uh, you know was necessary at the time to try and make sure that we don't cripple the economy further. Um, I think if you know um, that the country was already in recession uh, when lockdown was implemented so some of the regulations kind of put a bit more strain on the economy and the healthcare system at the same time. Yeah, considering South Africa's poverty levels, half the country live below the poverty line as compared to, say, with Nigeria. Uh, apparently, we are the poverty capital um, of the world. Why would you say South Africa still accounts for half of Africa's cases and one-fifth of the world cases? The one thing that uh, we can acknowledge uh, that government did right is that South Africa has the most number of, of tests. We are currently sitting at over 2 million people who have been tested in the country. Um, if you compare this to some of the other African countries, I don't think they've even got half of the amount of testing that we have. Government has been uh, trying to reach some of these far-flying areas where if, you know, in cases where we cannot provide beds, we have been screening, we have been testing, um, you know, we are a bit more proactive and a bit more transparent in terms of our condition and the numbers that we have. What of issues of compliance and dissemination of information? How cooperative has the public been? The issue that we're facing is that the public has not necessarily been playing along. There's the regulations that have been put in place, for example, under lockdown level three. Um, government had released, uh, you know, had, had granted the, the, the retail of, of alcohol. And this had actually put pressure on the on the hospitals because people then started to host gatherings with their friends. Um, people were not complying to the 50 uh, person limitation at funerals. Our funeral culture is quite uh, elaborate. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, um, but you know, our funerals are a pretty large large uh, and uh, large gatherings and that is where the hotbeds for coronavirus was. Um, we also have an issue with some people who do not necessarily go uh, you know for testing once they display some of the symptoms um, opting to rather try and, and, and use um, you know re remedies that they would pick up in social media from friends of theirs who have tested positive. So I don't uh, um, I think you know about 70 percent of the population is is complying um, but 30 percent is, is actually the pressure point that government struggles with. All right, Neil, thank you very much for giving us some insights to the situation in South Africa. Do stay safe. Thank you.